Right now we are on. We are in Dusseldorf. Uh, last night played in Brussels. Are we supposed to let these people go? We're a little bit early, so we're going to go to this uh, place called Troc, which is just on the outskirts of Dusseldorf. And hopefully, fingers crossed, there'll be some second-hand goods that we can modify for the show. Into Troc. So after looking through Troc for a few minutes, it became apparent that it was mainly second-hand German furniture. And there wasn't many electrical items, well, at all really. There was a lot of speaker cabinets and lights, but nothing that really like caught my attention uh, as far as modifications go. There was a turntable in the cabinet, but you know, I wasn't feeling that today. A few fancy toys, but nothing electronic yet again. Then the penny dropped. There it was in the distance, a cash register. Time to modify this, I guess. <laughs> So I emptied my piggy bank and took it back to the hotel. Time to get out of the portable toolbox, which has got a bag of screwdrivers and pliers and all that you need in a tiny little bag. Some spare components, switches and knobs, a drill, multimeter and a cable tester. Don't forget about the gas powered soldering iron because you don't know when you're going to need it. You might be in the middle ages or the north of England. Where are you going to find a power outlet then? So I just took it apart basically. It looks lovely. Sadly there was no receipt paper in there and it didn't even turn on. And worst of all, there was no money left in it. Then I inspected the wires going off the keypad on the front. It had two ribbon cables running off it. One with seven pins and the other one with 11 pins. These are for the button matrix, basically making a grid of buttons, seven by 11, giving each button a coordinate on the grid. So when you push a button, the the cash register's brain knows which one you've pressed as it corresponds to a place in the 7x11 grid. I took the board that it was connected to as that had some components on it that I still needed to use to make this whole thing function. I then soldered a bunch of wires off the connectors that go to the button matrix so then I can solder these on to this lovely Arduino Nano which is then going to act as the new brains for the cash register. It's going to listen to the button matrix on the front and convert it into musical commands that my synthesizer will listen to at the gig. Then I popped it all back together. Just gonna finish it off before we get to the show. Kind of picked up a couple of batteries and wires and ropes and stuff from Bauhaus, which apparently is a fancy hardware. Pretty fancy. Need to put a battery in here and fingers crossed it's all gonna work. Look, have a look at that. So I've got a strap on it. Uh, the end, the back on it's not quite on, but as you can see, you can play it. Oh no, I put it, I built it upside down. I've got to put the strap on the other side, don't I? We've got an Arduino Nano that is basically speaking to the button matrix that is on here. Uh, if you've watched this whole video, you know that. There's a nine volt battery that I'm waiting for the super glue to dry on. There's a switch and that's basically it. And hopefully this is gonna be a jam machine and I'm gonna give it away to somebody at the end of the gig. I'm not sure. I don't know whether I want to part with it yet. I think it's gonna work really nicely. Right, so I'm currently backstage. I did just try it in the sound check and I made a few mistakes that I've had to quickly rectify. Basically the diodes in the bottom matrix, yeah, if you know, uh, in the actual cash register were the wrong way around to what I thought they were. So I've basically taken them all off the circuit board and flipped them around and now it works, it works. Look at this, so here it is. You have no idea what any of the keys are because the kind of button matrix is laid out in a very random fashion. So like, it's like. So yeah, this was a broken cashier about 24 hours ago and now it is an awful musical synthesizer. So yeah, let's go and uh, try it out on stage, shall we? Okay, cameraman number one. Right, I'm gonna try this. I, I built this, as you know, in Bauhaus car park. And also IBIS budget, it's all gone wrong. After all that, I forgot to actually bring the custom MIDI cable that I made for it onto the stage. Oh. Well, he's still searching for the cable. So <laughs> we're gonna wait. Alex from the tube saved the day and found it in the backstage upstairs. <laughs> but then I tried to play it and the only thing that would come out was some very, 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 very dodgy dance music riffs. It was pretty damn dodgy. But out of that, I gave it to Making Sounds and Machines at the end of the gig, and they had a bit more time with it and managed to make something good with it. And here's the video of them jamming with it.
after this, me and Johnny headed off to Amsterdam. But I caught an awful tummy bug, and yeah, it wasn't a grand day. He's back to be sick in. Look at him. He's a shell of his former self. How are you feeling, hot dog? Okay. So I missed a few days of my plan of modifying instruments. But saying that, there were some amazing donations in Amsterdam, uh, including this one, which I'm actually gonna modify now. I'm in Norway, and you'll see this in the next video. But now I'm feeling more human. I'll be posting more vlogs on Patreon and stuff. And until next time, I've been looking at my computer, and don't be scared to try it.